Greetings. Welcome to session two of the Primer and Project Management in ICTD. Our discussion will revolve around project teams, stakeholders, and organizations. This session is based on chapters one, three of Primer two. Our learning objectives are Understand the importance of knowing the critical success factors of projects. The project setting, communities, organizations. The roles and responsibilities of a project manager and members of the project team. The different stakeholders of a project. The role of communications in development projects. The need to anticipate change in a project environment and stakeholders. We have here a list of critical success factors. These are factors that must be there to help your project succeed. Support from sponsors or from upper management provide confidence and assurance that the project will be carried out. The other one is involvement of the users or beneficiaries. Make the project clear and easily understood by the project actors. Experienced project managers are able to demonstrate organized and systematic ways in preparing and implementing the project. Clear goals and objectives provide specific and measurable indicators to make the project understandable. Another success factor, small and attainable project scope enables the manager to avoid complicated processes. The use of reliable infrastructures or systems will help the team and the beneficiaries employ reliable systems and are on the same page for applications. And firm basic requirements provide stable and consistent work activities for all the project team members. Another success factor is use a formal methodology enable systematic and structured working processes. Reliable estimates provide dependable and consistent approximation of the plan to real applications. And the factor involving proper planning, hiring, competent staff, and stakeholders ownership. If we are to categorize the list, there are almost half in the list that are about people whom you will deal with during the entire project duration. The environment and setting of projects can be in a community or in an organization. ICT projects that aim for the empowerment of members of the community may include 1. Providing access to ICT resources through setting up of computers and internet centers. 2. Providing capacity building activities in the use of ICTs for community members. Infomediaries, library e-centers, ICT for health, education, ICTs for disaster preparedness and risk reduction. Another ICTD setting are in organizations. E-government is about making government organizations more accessible through its products and services, more accessible to citizens. So what are organizations? Organizations defined as a social unit of people that is structured and managed to meet a need or to pursue collective goals. The key elements of any formal organization are its people, structure, operating procedures, politics, and culture. Now let us understand organizations and information systems. Information and communications created and produced by any organization. Governments are organizations that provide information and services to citizens. Government to become more efficient and effective has to review its information systems and processes. 
the information system when automated and digitized results to a growing interdependence between business strategy, rules and procedures on one hand, and information systems and software, hardware, databases, and telecommunications on the other. Changes in one component will affect other components and may require changes in those components as well. Government, like any organizations of general functions or roles in handling information and communication technology. Here in this slide is a triangle where we, we can understand the levels of function of people in the organization. The level refers to the kind of function that people have in an organization. At the tip of the triangle is a strategic level system in the organization. The function of those who are in the strategic level is to set directions, plan, and to make big decisions for the organization. This is the role of executives in the organization. The system required for this level are those that can support the executive functions. The management level system in an organization refer to personnel whose function is to manage their departments. They make decisions for their departments. The knowledge level system is where the technical people are mostly into. Their role in the organization is to create the kind of knowledge that the organization needs. If the organization is there to deliver health services at the knowledge level, the personnel are working in the development of health knowledge. Then, at the base of the triangle are personnel that operates and are responsible for the daily transactions of the organization, such as the processing and production of the goods and services, financial or administrative work, and those that deal with citizens as your clients or customers. To make work more efficient in organizations, Computer systems and function business applications are used. Thus, the organization must have the ICT hardware and software components to serve the functions of the organization. In organizations, there are political considerations in managing projects. This is because organizations are made up of people with different functions and responsibilities, different backgrounds and interests that influence decisions and set of ways of doing things in the organization. This includes motivation. After our discussions on the organization, let us now look into the people who manage and compose the project team and the stakeholders whom we can categorize as sponsors, champions, influencers, and users of products and services. First, let us look into the roles and functions of a project manager. The project manager has a lot of things to do, as you can see in the list. Strategic planning, define project goals, responsible for the financial management, ensure that deliverables are achieved on time and on budget, risk identification and mitigation, manage the procurement process, monitor and evaluate project, manage project the proper way, establish the project management office, define team members of the project, coordinate the team members, people management, communications management, reporting, and keeping the boss and stakeholders happy. So, if you're going to select a project manager to perform the functions we just mentioned, he or she must have a certain qualities that will fit the work that she must do in the project. In this slide, you have a list a committed leader, and inspire a shared principle or vision, a good communicator, has integrity, 
consistent ethical behavior, has enthusiasm, has empathy, adaptability, ability to delegate tasks, trusts, and exercises fairness in the team. Team building skills must have a sense of urgency but is cool under pressure, has problem solving skills, competent, and has common sense prudent risk taker. Do you know other qualities that a manager should possess? As to skills, it will be preferable that he or she will have the following skill set. 1. Leadership Then you need to have people skills, communication skills, skills for prioritizing activities, goal setting and scope management, conflict resolution, conflict management, must have critical thinking, problem solving skills, risk management skills, quality management, time and cost management, Performance monitoring, documentation, information management. There are others that you can think about. One special skill set is that the project manager must have knowledge and experience in managing human development projects. Now, here's a link that provides free online assessment tools of your personality and leadership styles and preferences. Have fun answering them and you may compare the results with your teammates for validation and discussions. Now, let's talk about the project team members. The members of the team must have supportive skill set to the project manager. The PMO, which comprise the project management team, must have the experience and expertise to plan, implement, and control the project. The project team must have the following skills and competency in the following. Interpersonal skills, application of knowledge, standards and regulations, general management knowledge and skills, understanding the project environment, specific competency skills such as those needing technical background, such as knowledge in computer systems, programming. Now, projects have so many activities and tasks to do. They cannot be done by the project manager alone. He or she will need to work with the team. Here in these slides are the effective qualities of a project team member. One, demonstrates reliability, communicates constructively, listens actively, functions as an active participant, shares openly and willingly, cooperates and pitches in to help you know, when there are problems, exhibits flexibility, shows commitment to the team, the goal of the project, we work as a problem solver, treats others in a respectful and supportive way. Are there others you can think about? Now, large and complex projects must have a project management office or the PMO. It is a department or group within the organization that defines and maintains the standards of process for project management. The PMO strives to standardize and introduce economies of repetition in the execution of projects. The PMO is the source of documentation, guidance, and metrics on the practice of project management execution. The PMO as a unit is composed of the project manager, project team members, other service providers, and as a unit, 
The functions are the ensures the proper and smooth project management in the most efficient way, sets of project management methodology, best practice, and standards. It manages operations and central management. Sets up quality standards and policies. It monitors and evaluates project activities. Facilitates consultation and sharing among team members. Ensures proper communication to stakeholders. Administers the project, which includes coordinating, organizing meetings, providing legal expert, providing service level agreement, monit and monitoring expert, and human resource management. Here's a sample of PMO organizational structure. At the top, you have a project sponsor, one who approves and make a big decision about the project. You may have a project review committee, sometimes called the steering committee, a group of individuals outside the PMO who can assess and recommend on the project directions. The project review committee can serve as guides for making big decisions for the project. Now, the project manager deals and reports directly with the sponsor and coordinates with the project review committee. The project manager also formally serves as the go-between of the sponsors and the review committee members. The members of the project team can be task managers who may have sub-teams based on the roles and functions identified in the project. Now, let's take a look at another group of people who are equally important to the project, the project stakeholders. Now, stakeholders are people who are involved and are affected directly and indirectly by the project and its end results. Now, to help you identify the key stakeholders, the set of guide questions can help. One, who might be affected by the development concern to be addressed? Who are the voiceless for whom special efforts may have to be made? Who are the representatives of those likely to be affected? Who is responsible for what is intended? Who is likely to mobilize for or against what is likely intended? Who can make it more effective through their participation or less effective by their non-participation or outright opposition? Who can contribute financial and technical resources? Now, whose behavior has to change for the effort to succeed? So, who can compose as project stakeholders? The following is another way of categorizing stakeholders. First, the sponsor. The sponsor is a person or a group that provides the resources, money, or in-kind for the project. Another stakeholder are the project champions. They're advocates of influential capacities. Then you have influencers, people or groups that are not directly related to the project but due to position can influence positively or negatively the course of the project. You have the ultimate beneficiaries or end users. They are a group of persons who will ultimately operate, own, and receive benefits from the project. Now, projects can introduce change to an organization or a community. It also affects and can have impact on the individual level. Example, 
students, employees, staff member, or a unit of an organization, or a beneficiary for community-based activity. And then at the organizational level, example, you have a unit, department, the whole office, or the whole agency. And in the systems level, for example, change in policy, standards, processes, and procedures. Change management is a set of coordinated and structured activities to transition from the old to the new systems. Now, change is also a component that should be considered in every aspect of the project plans and the management cycle. Resources, time, and costs must also be allocated in preparing for actions and reactions to change. Now, some examples of change management activities are development of action plans on change management, um, development of implementation of communication plans, preparation and conduct of training modules and hands-on demonstrations, to prepare users for new systems. Now, since projects are mostly dealing with people, communication plays an important role in the project processes. This is because communication is indispensable to any human development project. It is recognized as a medium for social change. The purpose of communication is to make sure of two-way and meaningful exchanges between and among parties and stakeholders who are involved in projects that promote human development. Now, development, development projects. There are many stakeholders from various backgrounds with different interests and motivation for participation. To prepare for transitions, sharing ideas and thoughts about the projects with beneficiaries and end users require many ways and frequencies of communications. If we are project managers, we want to be assured that project goals and objectives are met. So preparing a communication plan helps convey fundamental messages about the project. Test if the ideas are relevant and effective to arrive at agreements for people to become motivated to participate and become involved in the accomplishment of objectives and realization of project benefits. A supplementary material on communication is found in the Annex section of the primer. Here, using this template, let us identify the stakeholders of the project. Identify the potential stakeholders, individuals and groups. What are the roles of these stakeholders? Are they influencers, sponsors, users, champions? What are the needs of these stakeholders? What are the expectations and interests of each stakeholder? What are their weaknesses and constraints? What are their possible contribution to the project? What are the consequences of their participation in the project? Now, using the template, let us identify the stakeholders of the project. Identify the potential stakeholders, individuals and groups. What are the roles of these stakeholders? Are they influencers, sponsors, users, champions? What are the needs of these stakeholders? What are the expectations and interests of each stakeholder? What are their weaknesses and constraints? What are their possible contribution to the project? What are the consequences of their participation in the project? Now, as said earlier, stakeholders refer to the individuals, groups, or organizations who are directly or indirectly affected by the project. They have influence or interest on the project or project activities. There are two types of stakeholders. You have primary or secondary. Direct or indirect refers to the stakeholders categorization based on their involvement and participation in the project. 
As primary stakeholders, they are key project participants as beneficiaries and or as decision makers. Now, secondary stakeholders, while they may be on the sidelines, they could also be influential to project and could serve as influencers, either positive or negative, or both, depending on the impact of interventions to their interest. Now, there are potential roles in the project, which refer to the identification of their function, positions, tasks, or dispositions in the project. They could be users, influencers, champions, channels, decision makers, partners, facilitators, and similar roles. Okay. Problems or need to the stakeholders requirement that has to be answered or met by the project. Again, in this matrix, you have expectations or interest in the project which refer to the concerns or the conditions of stakeholders to participate in the project. Now, you also have weakness, constraint, or influence which refer to the limitations or the power of the stakeholders to convince people to participate in the project. Then you have potential contribution, positive or negative. This refers to the possible or probable inputs or influence of the stakeholder to the project. By positive means like a likelihood of a favorable contribution to the project. By negative means a possibility of an unfavorable contribution to the project. Then you have consequences of their contribution in the project. The positive contribution of an individual, the group, or an organization means that there is an ability or capacity to facilitate or help in the development and implementation of the project. The negative contribution to the project may result to risk factors or problems to the project. It will be important to identify these possible consequences to be warmed to the flow likelihood of magnitude of the effect of the project. Here is a sample of an identified stakeholder for a project. The stakeholders matrix can have many listed in the potential stakeholders column and corresponding answers to each column. So let us take the example of one, the stakeholders group in a project case study, the local government officials. The potential role of this group is primary. They accept the project and make the project official. They have computers. They can be used for training. Uh, in terms of problems and needs, it, we're not fully certain of the benefits of the project. Low or no computer and internet literacy. What about expectation and interest? Half of them are open to the project and see the value of computers and internet as tools for learning. The other half are resisting and fear the effects of learning in the use of computers and internet for boys and families. Now, what about weakness and constraints? They are highly influential to the community, but will have to be convinced about the benefits of the project. They may pose some problems in the project if not convinced. They will have to issue official memorandum of agreement with the university to make the project official. What about their potential contribution? Positive or negative? In that assessment, they're both negative and positive. If convinced, the project will immediately gain grounds. If not convinced, the project can stall. Now, what's the consequence for the project concept? 
The project must be able to convince all the local officials. The project team must be wary of the internal politics and dynamics among officials. We will need to understand internal dynamics among the political figures. Now, doing this exercise help us analyze and give indications on how we will deal with stakeholders group. So now, let us summarize what we discussed and learned from this session about the project team, the organization, and stakeholders. More than half of the critical success factors of projects are related to the people involved and affected by the project. Projects must consider the setting, the human resource environment, and the composition of the project team. It is essential to understand the roles and responsibilities of a project manager and members of the project team. Understanding and analyzing the different stakeholders of a project is critical. Now, communication plays an important role in development projects to anticipate, address, and manage change in the project environment and the stakeholders. Until our next session.